Hey you all. Oh my gosh, it's been such a long time since I've gone live and I'm really, really excited about today. Happy New Year. I will start by wishing you all a happy new year. It's been a great start to 2022. Um, so today I'm going to be going live with my wonderful friend, Alicia. And hey, Alicia. Hi. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. Your hair looks beautiful, as oh, always. Thank oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Because I wasn't feeling it today. <laughs> oh my gosh, you look so cute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce you, Alicia, and then we'll jump into the interview. I know we have 30 minutes, and I want to make the most of your time. So to everyone who's just joining, this is part of the Fueled by Faith series. I'm super excited to have Alicia Johnson with me today um, as my first guest of 2022. She is just, oh my gosh, I love watching her content. She's so down to earth. If you um, have ever heard of Southern Charm, she really has like Southern Charm. And I just, I don't know, I love everything about her. So um, she's actually passionate about spreading goodness, whether it's through vegan recipes, um, health tips, inspirational posts, spiritual posts and support or natural remedies. And I've seen quite a few of her posts around like natural remedies and um, all of the food that she makes looks so delicious. So I'm just going to tell you all now, if you don't want to be like, don't go to her page hungry. Because <laughs> if you go to her page hungry, you are going to leave depressed. <laughs> so um, but all of her content is great. So Alicia, we'll jump right in. Thank you again for being here. And again, I'm so happy you're my first guest of 2022. <laughs> um, so I know that you went vegan in 2017. And you shared a little bit about your story. I like did a deep dive into everything related to you. So 2017, you went vegan. I know your son um, had eczema and was kind of, you were faced with that. And so that was part of like some of the lifestyle changes. Can you share a little bit more about your vegan journey? And by the way, I'm eating some like vegan Cheez-Its by Earth Balance. They are so delicious. Oh, so I, know, I needed really a good. snack. Yeah, they <laughs> so are you see really me good. munching. <laughs> That's okay. So, That's fine. <laughs> so tell us about your journey. Well, I started off by watching With the Health and that's what like kind of made me change our lifestyle but he was born with like bad sinus infections and eczema that I was like really getting irritated by because he was a baby you know and to see him keep itching and stuff like that so <clears throat> I was listening to the doctors at first and using the, the cream to get rid of it but after a while I was like I know it had to be something internal mm -hmm. so after watching with the health I went ahead and, and took him away from certain foods and I saw a difference and that's what, what made me just do it. And I said, if I'm going to do it for him, I might as well do it for myself. And then I just got more and more creative with it. And it's just become a habit that I don't even think about it anymore. It's just like normal for us now. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's really awesome. I feel like a lot of times <clears throat> our kids can be the catalyst to us making a change in our life. Like we never want to see our babies hurting. So it's right, great. Right. I mean, it's not great that your son had eczema, but it's great that you were able to take that experience and look for natural ways to change it versus just taking what the doctors were prescribing. Um, so how have you sort of faced adversity, like raising your son vegan? Um, I know for us, like taking our toddler specifically to the doctor, like the doctor was like, Oh my gosh, don't, I don't recommend any sort of diets under the age of two. So I don't know how old he was when you went through this experience, but have you experienced any like judgment or challenges because of raising him vegan? Yes, I have. And to, to be honest, when, when he's with um, certain family members, I do allow him to eat certain things mm -hmm. with them. We just are like very restricted when it comes down to like pork and you know like red meats and stuff like that but like mm -hmm. chicken or something like that he can gradually have if he's with other family members because you know i do need a break sometimes <laughs> but oh, yes. um but we but uh, the adversity like at first yeah i got some negative feedback from family members and friends but um as i started cooking the stuff the food so they won't even know the difference it was kind of like well okay well it still tastes the same so to be fine then or whatever it gradually got better you know um it really wasn't like that bad at first because it was a challenge for me too because I was like man I don't even know what to cook you know mm -hmm. I can't just give him a whole bunch of it, it seemed like I was giving him diet food at first 
Yeah. And I just, uh, you know, I just had to get creative with it. So everybody's on board now. They, you know, respect what, what we do and, and just roll with it. So that's great. And I honestly, I know a lot of vegans, like there's so much conversation <clears throat> around like what percentage of vegan you are. And it's, it's too much pressure. I feel, you know, like you it said, is. We're the same with our older son. He wasn't vegan when he came into the world. And, and up until like last year, he wasn't vegan. So when we, if he's at school, we let him buy whatever he wants. But we tell him like, you know, you have the lunch money, spend it wisely, make healthy choices. Right. If you want to eat cheese pizza at school, we're not going to like beat you up for it. Like you right, have to right. make your decisions for yourself. So I'm proud of you for doing that. Um, takes away the pressure. Yeah, and they deserve to be respected. Even though exactly. they're children, they, they do deserve to have a voice of opinion, you know. I love that. And as they get older, then they can make the decision for themselves yep. for a permanent lifestyle. Amazing. I love that. So tell me a little bit. I know you went vegan. Part of the story was like, you know, your son and his eczema. But would you say that you're vegan now for the environment, for your health, or... Um, for the animals, like, tell me a little bit about that, because I know that's a, a very hot topic in the vegan community. It is, it is. Now it's for all three, to be honest with you, because we yeah. all need it. We we need it for our health, just so we can be healthy and live a longer life. And yeah. then we need, I, I just cannot stand the thought of the animals being, you know, the way, yeah. you know, how they They're smell treated. And stuff. Yeah, it's I, so I, true. It, it hurts my heart. And then overall, we need the environment, we need our trees, we need everything in order for us to grow as a unit so mm -hmm. all of it is just so important it's just really really important so i say all three i'm so all proud three. of you okay so we did not prepare <laughs> this question and i didn't send it to you so i i always put my guests on the spot and i'm sorry but my brain's always on so That's i know you talked about what the health being the documentary that you watched have you watched any others that you'd like to recommend to this audience while they're here I watched, um, what is it, Forks and Knives? Is that oh, it? Forks Over Knives. Uh -huh. uh, Forks Over Knives, okay. And it was one more. I just can't remember the name of it. It came back. Oh, man. I remember it was a, like a cow or something on it. Oh, um, Cowspiracy. Yes, that, right. I haven't yes, seen that, that one there. either. Yeah, is it good? That, yeah, it's really good. It's really okay. good. It just That's has cool. you at the, on, on, just looking at the TV like, what? I know. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah the documentaries will they will definitely change your life. So changing gears a little bit. So why did you decide to publish your recipes? When I was kind of researching more about you, I saw like, I watched an interview of you. I, I believe it was an interview or like maybe it was it was something on YouTube. I'm pretty sure. Oh, you were on the news. You were on the yeah. news and you were showing a recipe. I can't remember what recipe it was. But it's you were chicken salad. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And you were making it and you were talking to the newscaster and you were telling your story. Um, but you also <coughs> talked about how you had published your recipes. So why did you decide so soon after going vegan? Because it seemed like it was really quick that you decided to start publishing your recipes. What made you do that? You you launched a book. So we'll talk about that next. But I want to hear <laughs> about what made you go that route. The thing is, is that as I was cooking the foods to 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 mimic, should I say, a Southern meal, that which I'm used to, um, I was feeding it to my family, and they wasn't complaining. Like, they was like, oh, this well, it's good. You know, what you put in this time? <laughs> you know, this, and I was thinking, okay, well, the perception of um, only eating plants seems to be boring. Well, back then, it was, you know, we even got creative now. So I was thinking, I was like, okay, um, I'm not that popular, but you know, I'm kind of, you know, I know some people in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Let me publish this book and help your other people that I know do the same thing. Not to say that they need to turn their life 100%, but just to say that they're open to vegan options. So yep. that's why I decided to do it. And I really, deep down, I did not think it was going to, like, prosper. Oh it's gosh. sad to say it like that. It's really sad to say it like that. I need to stop thinking like that. I but mean, it's I really human. Think, yeah, I was like, I mean, ain't nobody go buy no cookbook. Don't nobody buy books no more. You know, I was thinking <laughs> like that, you know, and to know that so many people actually purchased it, not just in Louisiana, but across the United States. I was wow. like, okay, <laughs> you know, wow. so yeah. Oh my gosh, what a blessing. And that's a perfect example of doing it even when you 
don't have all the answers doing it even if you don't think it's going to prosper that's being fueled by faith like just taking a chance and saying hey I have this information I want to share it with others if it prospers great you know if it doesn't then you know let the chips fall where they may and then it ended up being so prosperous so what did that process look like in 2018 when you published your book um, your cookbook actually mommy's cooking healthy which I need to buy it hold me accountable I'm going to get it before like (laughs) Give me till July to get it because I'm like, okay. all you know, I got some stuff going on. So how did you kind of spread the word um, and, and market that? And, you know, I know that you're in some big names like Target and Walmart. I saw that as well. So yeah. how did you market that? Well, I just got in contact with um, Barnes & Noble. So I started off with them first. Well, let, let me just go back. Um, I did go with a, a publishing company. And with the contract, it did say that it will be in Barnes & Noble and Amazon, but they didn't say the other places. So what I did was I contacted all of the local Barnes and Nobles and they, and found out that if you're a local author, you can do book signings for free. Oh my gosh. So I just booked my own book tour in Louisiana and that's how I got it out there. And come to find out the company said because so many people were buying the books. We're going to go ahead and expand it and allow it to be available online for Target and Walmart oh and Books gosh. a Million. So that that's how that happened. And I was like, you, okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. So I'm in Cincinnati. Can I go to my local bookstore and buy it there or, like, yeah, request you can, it? Yeah, you can, you can go online for sure and order it through Barnes & Noble. But if you call them and tell them, hey, you know, I was looking for Mama's Cooking Healthy. I didn't see it on the show. They're supposed to order like at least three or four and put. Oh yes, put it in okay, there. yeah. So everybody listening right now, I <laughs> want you after this live, call Barnes and Noble, ask them, say, hey, can you all order Mommy's Cooking Healthy? Then they'll get three or four in the store, and yes. then we can purchase one, and then we're going to spread Alicia's book a- across yes. the globe. So I'm <laughs> Thank excited. You. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. So I know you already talked about going with a publishing company, but did you hire any sort of editor, or did the publishing company <clears throat> offer that? And the reason I want to share like the tips around this is because there are so many of us who aren't going the route of publishing our recipes, and it feels like such a big feat. So what kind of advice would you give around that? Like, I know you did have the opportunity to go with the publishing company, but did you have an editor and what did that process sort of look like for you? Well, with that particular company, um, they already had, like they had different type of packages. And if you already had your book edited, you didn't have to pay for them to wow. edit it. So it was different type of packages, but I wouldn't um, persuade anyone to go with that company because, um, <laughs> yeah, it, not talking negative. I mm-hmm. just, I'm just advising you not to, but to just do your research before you pick a publishing company. And and whenever they offer like um, payment plans or something like that, that's typically like a red flag. Mm, you want to okay. go with a company where you're paying a flat amount and you want to know where your book will end up afterwards. And you also want to make sure how much your royalties will be. Find that out first before Mm. you go into um, doing it. Okay, so if anybody's getting a book, I have some ideas for myself. I will be calling you and booking some time with you. You should do (laughs) consulting. I'm just thinking about it. You should become a consult for stuff like Mm. this. You've already gone through the process. Yeah, there's so many content creators. You could totally do it, and you have a large following, so it's possible. So um, speaking of her large following, if you do not follow Alicia already, please go over to her (coughs) um, Instagram. I have it tagged here, McHealthy225, so you can go ahead and tap on her name there, and it will give you the option to follow at this time. So let's switch over to life today. I know you have a strong presence on TikTok. Um, what's your favorite TikTok, um, TikTok or IG? Like which, which platform do you prefer? Cause you're busy on both. So do you have a, a favorite? <laughs> um, I actually like IG better. I, I guess I'm a little bit of old school. You know, <laughs> I, I try to keep up with everybody, but I'm just like, Oh Lord, now we got another site. We got to oh, <laughs> make ourselves notice of what the only thing about it's TikTok hard. is that I'm not big on trends. I've mm. never been like 
try to do what everybody else do. And it yeah. seems like on TikTok, like you, if you hop on a trend, like you everybody will know, yeah, you know, and that's just not me. I tried it. I was like, I'm not putting this on you. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you on keep IG, doing I feel you. more comfortable. You know, mm-hmm. I feel a little bit more at home on IG and Facebook. That. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, you've heard it first here. <laughs> Instagram is her favorite. Um, so do you have, like, I know that you're veganizing a lot of your favorite Southern meals, but have you really found, like, tell the people what they really want to hear. Do you find that they're actually like the real deal? Yeah, I, I believe so. There are some, like, maybe like the, um, like the mock meat, that mm-hmm. I'm not too fond of anymore. You know, when you first become vegan, you still want that chicken yeah. taste. You still want that beef and stuff. So we geared towards the yep. replacements. And as you grow into the vegan, like the vegan world, you'd be like, I don't even want this. I want more mm-hmm. plants. So yep. I'm like, I'm, I'm more wrapped into like your jackfruit and your breadfruit and, and, and um, hearts of palm. And mm-hmm. when you season it well, too, this ain't the same to me. <laughs> it, it, to me, it's a, my baby don't know the difference. It, my wow. family don't know the difference. They still eat it as if it's the real deal, wow. you know? Like, I really don't get any complaints. But it took a lot of practice, though. I'm not going to say I just did it, mm-hmm. you know, right off the bat. But, yeah, you just see. I, I have to, what you have to do is stop thinking that this is not me. So you just mm. season it as if you just get it out your mind and just be like, okay, the jackfruit to me looks like my chicken. I'm about to mm-hmm. season it just like my chicken. You can marinate it, you know, do whatever you want to do. And then it come to find out when you get your meal, it's going to taste just like you always been eating. That is chicken. so, I cannot get my head it's around my jackfruit. Thing. I just can't get my head around jackfruit. I've tried it so many times. I even bought when we first went vegan, Alicia, I bought a big jackfruit at the store because I thought, <laughs> I'm going to try this. <laughs> and I have a picture on my Instagram of me holding like this big jackfruit. And now I'm like, okay, I did that all wrong. I need to get the canned jackfruit. It's a little bit smarter to go that route. But even trying canned jackfruit, I just can't get there. I have tried pulled jackfruit sandwiches and yeah. that's really good. But I do <clears> think <throat> you're right. Like I found myself and John and I like, you know, as we've grown into being better vegans for our family, like we used to eat a lot of the mock meats. And now, honestly, we still, I'm not going to lie. I love Beyond Meats, like sausage links that they have. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, those yeah. are to die for. Mm-hmm. But this past week, we've been eating a lot of like soup and like truly plant-based, like eating our plants. And yeah. it's just so much better. I mean, even when it comes down to like our cheese, like we're not really using a whole lot of the cheese replacements. Now we just grind up some cashews and yeah I mean it's just it's weird how you can transition and in just a year and a couple of months time like we relied so heavily on that and now I just want like a really fresh salad <clears throat> so that's that's a really good point I think so many vegans feel very similar to you so your meatless chicken salad first of all I need to know if I purchase it will it be shipped to me can I purchase it or is it just in Louisiana and then also, you were selling it. Are you still selling it? Is it still available? And what made you decide to sell it as well? So tell us so the listeners can know how they can get their hands on some, some if it's even available. Okay, so I, uh, the reason why I started selling it is when I was doing my book signing, I wanted to have samples of, of something that I knew for a fact that was going to persuade them to say, oh, I'm going to get this book or this is good. So I made the chicken salad and I made little samples. I had little um, crackers and I had them taste it and everybody was like, oh, so do you sell it? Do you sell it? And I'm thinking to myself, no, but I can. So uh, (laughs) what I did was I went on Amazon, got the proper materials that I needed and I just started selling it locally. I've never shipped it out to anyone yet and I've gotten... Um, request and I, I apologize to anyone who I said I got you I got you and I never did it's only because I'm trying to make everything everything is is is, is within alignment and I want to make sure that you know when you get it it's still cold and mm-hmm. you know I, I really need to get into that but I'm trying to get it into the store okay. that's what I'm really trying to do but you it's hear uh, that. But for you, Taylor, I would do whatever I got to do if I got to buy some, what is it, the hot ice? Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like, I, I will you. even pay for the hot ice if it means I will get it to my front door. Because <laughs> I would love to try it and it looks really like it looks like chicken salad. So I'm I'm like, we might have to talk after this live just so <laughs> I can try it. And I'll let everybody on the live know how good it is because I'm sure it will be. I love um I used to love tuna salad before I went vegan. Mm. So now I make like a vegan tuna salad, which I haven't made in a while and I might need to make it today. But with chickpeas, and it is just, it's crazy what a chickpea can do and how it can change your life. I mean, I've made chickpea chocolate chip cookies, chickpea tuna salad. It's like, they are a versatile um, legume. I guess they're considered a legume, right? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, because it's not a bean, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to talk about that chicken salad, and hopefully... Where I'm, I'm adding a task to your list. Not that your list is short, but I would love to see you get into the stores and be able to ship, you know, worldwide at, at some point. So that's great. Um, so how have you learned to balance all of your social media platforms? Because I know you're on Facebook. So just so you all know, she's on Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok. I feel like I'm missing one. And Twitter. Right. Yeah. At yeah, Nick I Healthy. On Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I haven't, Twitter is dead to me. I haven't used I it in like 10 years. <laughs> so you're basically on every platform. How do you manage everything? And then you're also a mom. So like, how are you showing up in all of these audiences and then also showing up with, with your son? At first it, it wasn't a balance. I used to be so hard on myself and feel like I have to put something out there, you know, and, and keep up. You know, mm-hmm. you'll feel like, you know, other people are, are so engaged with their audience. They're always available. How? I'll be like, yeah, what? exactly. What, what, you know what I'm doing wrong. So I took a moment to like really just map out what was more important. What's important is my son and make sure that he gets the attention that he needs. And I just mapped out, OK, on Wednesdays, we're going to do a video together. So we're not going to post something every day. We're not going to do it every other day. We might do it once a week. We're going to do it at our pace, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I post on one site, I just go ahead and post it on the rest of them to show, okay, you can catch it here, here, and here. Mm -hmm. But we just go at our own pace. If I'm not feeling it, I'm just not feeling it. (laughs) You know, I love that. Yeah, Yeah, social media brings so much pressure, too. I feel like we're all... We're like, I tell people, like, do the hokey pokey. Now we're going to do the hokey pokey. And then we're going to twirl around. And then you got to break it down. It's like they want us to make a fool of ourselves for the right. sake of 10,000 followers. And it's like, I'm not about to do that. It is way too much pressure. And it's right. exhausting. Exactly. It's like, and you're right about the trends. Like, I found myself doing a lot of trends. And then I was like, this is so stupid. Like, it's it's great. And it's entertaining and it's fun. Mm -hmm. Like I still incorporate a few of like, not necessarily the dance trends, because I'm not gonna lie, I am uh, I'm 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 offensive to the culture when it comes to me being able to dance really well. But truly, like I found myself like, okay, I cannot keep up with the trends all the time and have a family and work my job and you know show up the way I'm supposed to as a wife, like. It's too much. So it is. I love that you say it's about, you know, the balance. And then also I love one thing that you call out is just like incorporating your son <laughs> into what you're doing, because that makes it a little bit easier to feel like you guys are bonding while also right. delivering to your audience. So real quick, if anybody has questions for Alicia, drop them in the comments right now. And we'll try and get those answered. Um, as we come to a close here, that was pretty quick I'm so sad I just want to press restart um so what's your favorite go-to vegan snack um I love just a bowl of fruit I just I just love it I love going to the um, farmer's market and just grabbing some fruit to come home wash them put them in a nice little bowl and that's just that's my go-to snack okay what kind of fruit do you put in your bowl uh I love pineapples mangoes and grapes Oh, wow. Those are my favorites. I love Mm -hmm. it. Do you try and incorporate? Because I've heard a lot of people talk about how important it is to kind of diversify your fruits and your veggies. And it is easy as a vegan, you know, somebody who's vegan to like get caught up in eating the same. Like we love Brussels sprouts. If you see us Mm -hmm. making vegetables, it's usually Brussels sprouts. So do you find yourself eating a lot of the same fruits and vegetables? How do you kind of diversify? I I do find myself eating the same thing because I'm the type of person that just like, but I, I, I like the way it tastes. I, mm-hmm. It's hard for me to break that habit. So I've yeah. been trying my best to 
okay, let me let me get a different fruit. Let me let me get some vegetables because mm. I be like I, I need to, like I love cucumbers. Don't get me wrong, and I love celery, but I don't find myself getting a bowl of vegetables, and I need mm-hmm. to start doing that. Yeah, me neither. Because I just yeah, I just love me some fruit. Some people grab like little baby carrots and they can eat a baby carrot and like some vegan ranch. And I'm like, not today. <laughs> yeah, like, my son would eat that before I would. I'd be like, wow. Oh. I'd be like, son, it's so okay. <laughs> now, if it's like um, in a soup with some celery mm-hmm. and some gravy yep. or something like that, yeah, but he'll just eat it raw. And I'm like, wow. Give me my grapes. That's, that's good though. So it sounds <laughs> it like is. you've had a pretty good vegan journey with him. Yes. Um, so what one piece of advice would you give some give to someone who's like newly vegan or thinking about going vegan? Any ideas, um, especially to somebody who loves Southern cooking? I, I, OK, for one, whatever you buy, just read your labels. Really, really just look at the things that's listed. If you can't pronounce it, just kind of stay away from it, because if they have to add all that to it, it's not at its purest form. Mm-hmm. And also don't beat yourself up. If you mess up, you know, you tried to go vegan for a whole week. That Sunday, you was like, nah, I need to get some fried chicken. Eat your fried chicken, okay? Because your body's going to talk to you anyway. Your body's going to mm-hmm. be like, ooh, I'm not, no, you gave you vegetables good. throughout the week. You know, yep. so you're going to be like, okay, well, I don't want it no more. Just pace yourself and don't compare yourself to other people. Just you do it for you. Love do that. it for you and your family. Takes, takes away the pressure for sure when yes, you're doing indeed. it for the right reasons. Yes, it's indeed. amazing. So um, do you have a favorite quote or mantra that you live by? Oh, um, we got this. I say that. And when you can say we, you can be talking to you and your spouse, um, you and your children, you and God. Mm -hmm. If ever I'm feeling very frustrated about something, I just whisper it to myself. We got this. You know, you can be talking to yourself like me, myself and I. We got this. Don't worry. We got this. Oh my gosh, I'm going to start saying that when I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm frustrated. We got this. It's yeah. such a good, it's a good mantra. Um, so you. a couple more questions. How can people connect with you and what goals or goal ha- do you have set for 2022? Like, what are you most excited about for this year? Well, the new book will be out this year. So that's what I'm very excited about. Okay, and, awesome. Um, Yes, and with that, I I want when I do my book tour, I don't want it to just be in Louisiana. So I want to branch Come out through. to other states. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the goal. So yeah, keep praying. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, have you released the title of the book, or what the focus of the book is yet, or can we not know that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always ask. I always put these like my my um, interviewees on the spot where I'm like, can you tell us more? <laughs> I want it to be like. Like the news, you know how like breaking news, there's yeah. always like one channel that breaks the news. So I would love to be the channel that breaks it. If you can't tell us, just tell us like a little bit about like what we should be excited about for the book. Is there anything specific? Um. Well, what, what I'm going to say is, is that all of my books are going to be called um, Mama's Cooking Healthy. It's just going to be a different edition. Okay, so Ooh, it is okay. going to be Mama's Cooking Healthy. But this time we're going to play with the alphabet. So that's. <gasps> so oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love it. Okay. And are you yeah. going with a different publisher this time or are you still kind yes. of sticking with? Yes, Congratulations. As a matter of fact, um, I, I wanted to tell the company because um, I highly recommend them. They're called Book Baby. Okay. You can Is find that their them Instagram, on Instagram too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can find them on Instagram. And you can just fill out an uh, inquiry and they'll send you um, brochures and magazines and stuff of examples of how they do. I, I just love them. I really oh love them. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yay. Shout out to Book Baby for taking Baby. Alicia, our girl, to the next level, new height. Yes. I am so excited to hear about the book. When can we expect it, roughly? I'm trying to have it out in July. That's okay. when I want it because I'm big on um, dates. Because the first book was published on my birthday, and I want the second one to be published on Kyrie's birthday. I want that date on it. So I'm big on dates. When is your birthday, Alicia? October 19th. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm going to put that on my calendar. Thank you again (laughs) so much. We're right at time. I never finish on time. So (laughs) we did. I'm like, 2022 is off to a good start. We asked you like 30 questions in 30 minutes. So 
thank you so, so much for joining. You have been such a pleasure and you bring so much of that like hospitality charm to, to everything that you do. So we appreciate you. If you're not already following Alicia, definitely go and follow her at McKelsey225. <clears throat> if anybody has questions, you have like one minute to write them. Um, and if you don't, then you can always just reach out directly to Alicia and, and yes. ask her your questions. Her link tree is fantastic as well. It has all of her links. It has tons of information. You offer a lot of discount codes for brands, different brands that you're working with for their products. So I think that's also great that you're giving back in that capacity. Um, and I'll have the show notes published to my blog, www.thetaylorisms.org. So you can hop over there in like two days or so. And I'll have the recording of this and also some of some interview highlights there as well. So thank you again, Alicia. No, thank you, Taylor. I just love you so much. It's so I humble. Love you back. Oh, thank you. I love you right back. I'm like, you should hear the, the voices in my head when I'm like, girl, you fine. <laughs> I'm a mess. Like, look at how smart you are. But I try, to, I try to be humble. <laughs> so, <laughs> but take care and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you everyone for okay. joining. Bye. See you all soon. Okay.